What is up, people? Since you requested it, we are back at it again today with another zone speculation video, this time diving into the deserts of Vera, discussing everything we know about this biome, from what it looks like to what kind of creatures and raid bosses you should expect out there. Sand Squall Desert. At least that's what I'm assuming its name is according to the last cosmetic pack, although this could just be a region in this desert, but it's what I'm sticking with for now. It is home to the Veiloon humans, and one of the first zones we actually saw in Ashes of Creation way, way back in the Nodes 2 video when they were giving us a look at a metropolis. This zone is located in the southern central part of Vera. It has eight nodes that can be developed on your server, and one of these nodes is on its own island, which could make for some pretty interesting dynamics, especially if a city gets built up there. And although we have seen no gameplay on this region in a very, very long time, it is one that I am expecting to see in Alpha 2 with the amount of concept creatures and cosmetics we have already seen lately, and it's also been confirmed that we're getting its neighboring region, the Riverlands, so why not just throw in both human zones to kind of complete this area of the world? But the reason these skins and the cosmetics matter is because for those who don't know, the skins that they put in these monthly cosmetic packs are what they are using to dress the NPCs and the buildings of the world in regions you come across. So seeing more desert skins and mounts and things like that probably mean they're putting in more work into the desert zone. Desert biomes in video games are very hit or miss. A lot of them are terrible and you try to avoid them at all costs when you're out adventuring. But a few of them, like Assassin's Creed Origins, are brilliantly done and feel like a beautiful part of the world with its mixture of sand dunes, ancient ruins, and tropical paradises near the water, and not just a barren wasteland. Which it looks though that we may get parts of this in the zone, but I think the majority of this zone is unfortunately going to be a more barren rocky area. This zone is said to be heavily inspired on the Middle East, which means although they do have sandy deserts, they do have a lot more of the rocky barrenness and mountainy regions that are also prominently shown off in the majority of the concept art they show for the nodes. But in Intrepid doesn't cheap out on the worlds they're designing. What they've shown us so far with everything looks beautiful, so the deserts I don't think we really have to worry about, but it'll definitely be a very interesting environment to explore and one that can really push that new technology that Intrepid has at their disposal, such as using Lumen from Unreal Engine 5 to light up the desert region with the hot desert sun shining everywhere in this zone. It'll make for some pretty unique experiences. And then the weather tech that we saw recently, although we saw Sought in the Riverlands and more of the traditional seasons, I can imagine Intrepid will be using this to move the sand across the dunes with the wind kicking up dust storms. In that weather preview, we got a small glimpse of dust storms when it turns to fall in the Riverlands, so I imagine if this is blown up into a full sandstorm in the desert, it could make it very fun, very challenging, and very hard to see on your adventures. I imagine overall though, the desert climate will relatively stay the same for the majority of the time, but Intrepid can definitely use the sand and the wind to really change up how it feels from time to time. The Sand Squall Desert has a river running straight up the middle of it all the way into the Riverlands, with a node at the beginning of the river where it opens up into the ocean. So you can bet this river will be filled very heavily with trade ships, and I would imagine that zone at the entrance to the ocean is probably going to be an economic node, just because it makes sense. Lore-wise, the Veiloon have very few natural resources for themselves, so it sounds as though that this node will will not solely survive on its artisans, but will definitely be more of a trade node, relying heavily on that river to bring in product from the Riverlands and all the crafting material for those players that decide to reside here. And it'll definitely be a pretty unique node with that thought in mind. Architecture wise, you can expect to see a lot of clay walls holding up the buildings of the nodes as well as tents where needed. And as I said earlier, it will be heavily inspired on Middle Eastern architecture. For the creatures that reside in this land, you can expect to see some scythe and scorpions who make their home in the sand squall deserts and have evolved to survive through their extreme conditions of their hostile ecosystem. There are also the dynasty beetles, the oracle of the far prairies, which are these weird looking rodent dudes, some glimmering geodes, the dune wing falcon, which many Veiloon use for hunting. Then there are also the perga 
Trail and the Bow Bite, which I believe are also in the desert due to this cosmetic freehold building that was in with the pack, but I could be wrong on this one, but I really don't think I am. You can also expect to be fighting this giant scorpion in the desert as a raid boss, whom you can see is absolutely massive compared to humans and will probably be a very deadly 40-man fight. What are your thoughts on the Sand Squall Desert in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments and let me know which zone you want me to speculate on next. And if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to do so with my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.